and welcome to another segment of the Turtis Pavlov Project. In this segment, I'm going to talk about the relative importance of talent versus practice in musical expertise. This is an issue that uh, parents are particularly interested in, uh, and it's an issue that's been debated for, uh, for centuries. Uh, the question is uh, whether someone has uh, inherent musical talent, and that's what makes them outstanding uh, performers, or whether it's uh, a function of uh, just lots of practice, which then creates the expertise. And on a practice uh, assumption, uh, the idea is that anybody could become really good if they practiced long enough. Traditionally, the way we've thought about uh, uh, outstanding musicianship is that it is a function of talent, and talent is presumably uh, inherited as part of your genetic makeup. Uh, this way of thinking about outstanding musicianship is uh, so deeply ingrained in us that if we hear an outstanding performance, uh, we are apt to comment, oh boy, that person is real, she was really talented. Uh, <clears throat> this traditional way of thinking about the role of talent versus practice uh, came under serious fire about 20 years ago when a psychologist by the name of Erickson reviewed a great deal of data on uh, reports of how much uh, time various experts spent in developing uh, their expertise and achieving the level of skill uh, that they enjoyed. So in a lot of these uh, reports, it was a question of, of uh, studying individuals of various levels of expertise and then looking back in time to see how much time these individuals spent practicing to achieve their uh, their level of skill. And the uh, remarkable finding was that across a, a wide range of domains, uh, including musical skill, but also various kinds of uh, uh, sports, golf, uh, gymnastics, and so on, as well as uh, things like uh, how much practice did it take to, for someone, or uh, how much practice did someone have before they became master chess players. And across these various domains, what Erickson reported is that uh, individuals with uh, eminent levels of skill, skill truly outstanding uh, levels of skill, inevitably had about 10,000 hours of uh, prior practice at their craft. And this became known as the 10,000 hour rule, and it became widely popularized, uh, best-selling authors such as Malcolm Gladwell uh, included this 10,000 hour rule in their uh, discussions and, uh, about human nature. Uh, so the 10,000 hour rule became widely accepted until about two years ago, in 2014 and then 2015, uh, scientists went back to re-examine the evidence for the 10,000 hour rule. And in the 2014 study, the really interesting finding was that the best evidence for the 10,000-hour uh, rule came from studies that had the weakest uh, type of methodology. In these studies, uh, individuals who are highly experts are asked to think back about how much time they spent practicing. And to accumulate 10,000 hours of practice, you have to spend uh, quite a few years doing it. So this often required thinking back many years and uh, trying to estimate, based on that uh, retrospective reflection, how much time you spent practicing. As you can imagine, uh, the estimates are pretty imprecise under those circumstances. In areas where uh, the methodology for collecting data on practice time was much more uh, 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 tight, where people kept uh, diaries, or you can even imagine uh, automatic recording devices. Uh, you know, a, a skater, for example, uh, who is practicing uh, uh, for uh, uh, expertise in skating would have to uh, 
uh, book time at a skating rink, and you can go back and, and actually tally uh, those practice times. The, the uh, better the evidence the, uh, was for how much time spent, uh, people spent practicing, uh, the weaker the relationship was between practice time and expertise, and the less evidence there was to support the 10,000 hour rule. So the whole thing has kind of gotten upended. Uh, and uh, the estimates from this reanalysis was that about 20% of the variation in uh, uh, expertise is attributable to practice. So that was a report in 2014. In 2015, uh, a couple of investigators, including one of my colleagues in the psychology department here at the University of Texas, Elliot Truck, uh, Tucker Drobe, uh, did a genetic analysis of musical skill. Now, if uh, expert musicianship is a function of talent, then we should see evidence of that uh, through a genetic al analysis. And uh, one way to approach the genetic analysis is to study identical versus uh, fraternal twins. So uh, these investigators looked at information from 850 pairs of twins. And identical twins share 100% of their genes, whereas uh, fraternal twins only share 50% of, of their genes. So you can vary uh, genetic relatedness uh, through that comparison and then uh, look to see uh, whether musical expertise is related primarily to genetics or, or uh, something else. And this study uh, generated uh, three really interesting findings. First, there was a weak relationship between genetics and, and musical expertise. So uh, there is evidence that uh, there is uh, uh, something that, uh, that we previously referred to as musical talent that in fact exists. But the evidence for that is not really strong. The other thing that is really interesting is that uh, they discovered a relationship between how much time people spend practicing and uh, uh, their genetics. So there was a genetic relationship uh, that uh, predicted the uh, amount of time devoted to practice, which means that there, in fact, is a talent for practicing. Finally, on the third finding, and in some ways this is the most intriguing, is there was an interaction between these two variables. Now what that means is that uh, the uh, genetic influence on musical expertise depended on how much time you spent practicing. Individuals who spent more time practicing showed a stronger genetic effect on expert musicianship. So musical talent in the traditional definition uh, is is more evidenced in individuals that practice more. So uh, what does this all mean? Well, one of the things that it means is that we can't think about uh, uh, whether expert musicianship is a result of uh, musical talent or uh, effort devoted to practice. And it's not an either or thing, it's a both thing. <laughs> So that's one of the really important things is we've thought about the problem in the incorrect way. Uh, genetic predispositions for musicianship are not going to make you an expert musician unless you practice. So it's both of those things are heavily involved. And the other thing that's really interesting about this, there seems to be evidence uh, for a talent to practice, which if you think about it, uh, makes a lot of sense. If you think uh, more deeply about the psychological uh, <clears throat> aspects of practicing, uh, I think it makes uh, sense to, th to uh, uh, see that there may in fact be a uh, talent for it. One of the things about practicing from a psychological perspective is that it's really boring. <laughs> it's really boring. Uh, and the, uh, what you have to, you have to repeatedly uh, do exercises or repeat a passage or uh, repeatedly play something over and over and over again, and uh, that gets pretty tedious. And uh, the ability to sustain 
uh, long periods of practice requires putting up with this boredom and realizing that this boring activity is connected to a desirable but uh, long-term goal. That is, in doing all this tedious practicing, you may not really achieve what you're after until weeks or months or perhaps years later. So on this ability to uh, connect some boring current activity to a, a desired outcome down the road is a very uh, challenging kind of psychological task, but one that's required for successful practice and one that evidently individuals who, uh, who spend a lot of time practicing have. So practicing is a pretty complex psychological process and it's rather special. And uh, it's, uh, uh, there seems to be a talent for it uh, based on your genetics just as much as uh, uh, there seems to be some evidence for uh, talent for uh, musicianship. So uh, don't, uh, we, sh we shouldn't think about is expert musicianship a function of talent or practice. When somebody performs a spectacular uh, concerto at a concert, uh, your remark should be, boy, they sure spent a lot of time practicing and I'm glad they had the talent so that the practicing <laughs> was beneficial. So it's a rather complex kind of uh, attribution of what the source of the excellence is. Now, <clears throat> I just wanna make one more remark about this issue of talent versus practice. And uh, this is something that I have not seen addressed in the research literature and that is What's the necessity for practice among indi individuals who have, who have achieved a high level of, uh, of skill and, and success? Uh, I suspect that uh, uh, even in individuals who have achieved a high level of skill, practicing is still necessary. And if you uh, have any questions about it, uh, you should uh, ask, talk to Tiger Woods. <laughs> Tiger Woods spends a lot of time practicing, even though he has achieved uh, at earlier stages in his career, spectacular levels of performance. So uh, in the opening here, uh, I played uh, Bourret number two from the third of the uh, uh, Bach cello suites. So in closing, uh, let me uh, play the whole piece. 